This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to factor. And uh, I've got a variety of problems. And uh, the first type of factoring problem we're going to take a look at is when terms have a common factor. All right, let's take care of our uh, first problem. So let's say we have a problem that looks like this, 3x plus 9. If we said we're going to factor it, uh, well, we would notice that these two terms have something in common. It turns out that we can factor out a 3. We could divide it by 3. They have no letters in common because there's no letters here, so all I could do is take out a 3. Now what I mean by that is, well, we're going to do the reverse distributive property. We're thinking 3 times something is 3x. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times something is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. And there you go. So in other words, if I do the distributive property, multiply this through, I get back the original problem. So therefore, that's the answer. I know I'm done when these two terms have nothing in common. There's no term. There's no, I should say, uh, coefficient. There's no factor in common. There's no letter in common. All right, that takes us to our second problem. So here's another problem. All right, now this problem, a little bit harder, 18 x cubed plus 50 x squared. All right, now this is a harder problem because not only do we have more factors with the numbers, but we also have some letters involved. All right, so our first trick is to look at these two and determine what is the largest number I could divide those by. So let's see, could I divide those by 2? Let's see, if I did, I would get 9 and 25, and yep, 9 and 25, yep, they have nothing in common, so I think the largest number I could divide by is at 2. Um, let's see, if I take an x out of both terms, let's see what happens. Just to show you what happens. Well, if I divide the numbers by 2, right, 2 times 9 is 18, 2 times 25 is 50. Those two numbers don't have anything in common, so that's a good sign that I'm factoring out the largest number possible. All right, you'll also notice here that, huh, we're taking out an x. If I took out an x, let's see, x times x squared, so x times x squared is x cubed. x times x is x squared. Yeah, they see they still have something in common. They still have x's. So that tells me that I did not take out as much as possible. All right, so I'm going to back up, and we're going to try that again. Okay, so instead of taking out an x, let's say we take out one more x. We'll take out an x squared. All right, so x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times, well, don't need any x, x's to get x squared there. There's a plus. All right, so if I multiply through, I get back the original problem. These two terms don't have anything in common. I'm done. All right, that takes us to our third problem. All right, the third problem is even going to be more complicated still. So 16 u to the fourth v squared minus 20 v squared, uh, oh, I'm sorry, was that a v or a u? Mm, I think that was supposed to be a u, yep. Let's try that with a u. There we go. u squared v to the fifth. All right, so there you go. So much more complicated, but I have, uh, again, only two terms. Sometimes I've seen problems with three terms, but the process still works the same. So I first look at the numbers, and I say, well, okay, well, of these two sets of factors, is there something in common between them? Well, certainly, I could divide them by 2. If I divide them by 2, I'm going to get 8 and 10. Oh, wait a minute, 8 and 10, I could still divide them by more. So I think the largest number I could divide by is 4. If I divide that by 4, I get 4. Divide that by 4, I get 5. Yep, that's going to work. All right, so if you just do the numbers first, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 5 
Actually, it will be a negative 5. So 4 times negative 5 is 20. All right, so the distributive property gets back my original problem with the numbers. Now let's do the letters. Let's see, I've got four U's there, i got two U's there, so the most I could take out is two U's out of each part. All right, so let's see, U squared times U squared is going to be U to the fourth. U squared times, well, I don't need any U's to get U to the U squared. That's all I need. That's it. So far, I'm good with the U's. All right, now between v squared and v to the fifth, I could take out v squared. So v squared times, well, I don't need any more v squareds. i got enough right there. v squared times v cubed. So v squared times v cubed, I get v to the fifth. All right, so there you go. I think I'm done. These two letters have nothing in common. These two numbers have no factors in common. There's no factors in common between that term and this term. Therefore, I am done. I factored completely with the largest common factor, or called the GCF greatest common factor. Okay, so if, you, if these terms have something in common, whether it be a number or a letter, you know you're just not factoring out enough, and this needs to be, you need to be uh, put more things out here, either a higher number or more letters. All right, so that's that. I'm going to make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive lessons and quizzes and activities and several other videos.